You own a territory. You own a doctor. You own your territory. You own a doctor. You own your territory. You own a doctor. Own a territory. You own a doctor. Please subscribe to our channel. Directed by David Yates, Pain Hustlers, starring Emily Blunt, Chris Evans, and Andy Garcia in the lead roles, is inspired by real events and shows us what happens when the priority of a healthcare system becomes to attain profit at any cost. The makers have taken a lot of creative liberties, and the film is not an exact adaptation of the works of Evan Hughes. Though the names of the characters and the nitty-gritty details of the Inzies Therapeutics Pharma scandal have been changed, the essence has pretty much been kept the same. The movie was inspired by Evan Hughes' 2018 New York Times Magazine article, The Pain Hustlers, which he later expanded into the book The Hard Sell, Crime and Punishment at an Opioid Startup. However, the core plot of the movie is fiction and does not appear in Hughes' article. In addition, director David Yates, best known for directing several of the Harry Potter films, gave the film a comedic tone that Hughes' article doesn't have. The medical profession is considered to be a noble service, and it is different from other professions, because if there are corrupt practices here, it is not only a violation of the law, but also means that people would end up losing their lives. When a doctor decides to prescribe a drug that he knows his patient does not need at that moment, he is not only committing a crime, but also putting the lives of hundreds of people at risk. What were the major differences from the real-life scandal? In the Pain Hustlers film, the pharma company is named Xana Therapeutics, whereas in real life, it is called Inzies Therapeutics. The company was founded by John Kapoor, on whom the character of Dr. Neil, played by Andy Garcia, is based. The company produced a spray named Subsies, the main ingredient of which was fentanyl, though in the film, the medication is called Lonophen. The character of Chris Evans, the CEO Pete Brenner, could be said to be loosely based on Michael Babich, who, at the time of the scandal, was the CEO of Enzys Therapeutics, and he worked very closely with John Kapoor during the launch of Subsies. But a lot of things about this character have been changed in the film, and the makers have taken creative liberties to introduce conflicts in his life that probably didn't happen in real life. We do not know what kind of relationship Babbage had with Kapoor or if the events occurred in the same manner as they were depicted in the film. The character of Emily Blunt was also not based on any specific person, but it could be said that the makers took inspiration from the real-life whistleblower named Maria Guzman, because of whom the scandal had come to light. Just like Guzman, Blunt's character was also a sales representative, who was later promoted after she cracked a few deals that enabled the pharma company to make huge profits. We don't know if Guzman's character also went through a similar dilemma or not, but since she went to court to expose the company, we can safely assume that a time would have come in her life when she would have decided to let her conscience prevail over everything else. Inzies Therapeutics sales reps bribed doctors with financial incentives to prescribe the company's fentanyl-based drug subsies. Inzies created a speaker program in which doctors were paid to promote the highly addictive drug. For example, according to The Guardian, Inzies paid nearly $260,000 to two New York doctors who wrote more than $6 million worth of subsies prescriptions in 2014. The drug was only authorized to be used as a pain-relieving medication for cancer patients and those on the verge of death. However, Inzies encouraged doctors to prescribe the drug to a wide range of people, including those outside the scope of its approval who were suffering from other types of pain. This resulted in a rise in opioid addiction. A pain hustler's fact check reveals that the real-life medication created by Inzies Therapeutics that inspired the movie was called Subsies. It was a sublingual liquid form of fentanyl, meaning that you applied it by spraying it under the tongue. The movie changes the name of the drug to Lonophen. However, minus the name change, they are essentially the same. The drug company's name is also changed. Inzies Therapeutics becomes the fictional Xana Therapeutics in the film. While conducting our pain hustlers fact versus fiction analysis, we learned that according to Stat News and court records, 
One NZ sales rep in Alabama had a base salary of $40,000 but received over $700,000 in commissions from 2013 to 2015. Inzi's Pharma left out the crucial parts in order to get FDA approvals. They hid the fact that during the trial, the drug was only given to opioid-tolerant patients, which is why the chances of addiction came out to be less than 1%. It is true that, after a point in time, Inzi's Pharma asked the doctors to prescribe the medication for all sorts of pain, be it a minor headache or excruciating body ache due to a terminal illness. That's where they destroyed the lives of hundreds of people, and they did it without even batting an eyelid. John Kapoor would have escaped the charges, but as shown in the film, the authorities came to know about his wire fraud and found him guilty under the RICO Act. Inzi's founder John Kapoor, a billionaire who started his company in 1990. For the crime of bribing doctors, Kapoor was sentenced to five and a half years in prison in 2019. To settle the federal government's case, Inzi's agreed to pay $225 million. The company eventually went bankrupt. Apart from John Kapoor and Michael Babich, five other employees, Alec Berlikoff, Richard Simon, Sunrise Lee, Joseph Robinson, and Michael Gurry, were convicted by the court. So that's pain hustlers and the true story of the Inzi's Therapeutics Pharma scandal explained. I hope you like this video. Please leave a comment and subscribe to this channel. See you in another video. Bye.